I want to spend a few moments right now talking about perspective. Uh, seems to be an issue a lot of people have trouble with is uh, understanding two-point perspective. So I thought I'd do, do a little sketch and then throw a little color on it probably, but uh, just give you some pointers. Um, this is the paper I'm going to use, and I use this quite a bit, especially for demos and through my workshops. But it's by Strathmore. It's a Series 400, and it's 140 pound cold press. I got a variety of brushes I'm going to use. I've got some mop brushes. I've got uh, some good round brushes, uh, Rosemary, Escoda, Legend, a number of different good round brushes. The key is uh, getting a good brush. Uh, you actually do get what you pay for. So I'm going to show you the finished painting I did this morning, but I want to start out with a sketch first, show you how I got there. So let's just start with a box. I'm going to make this a little larger here. Okay, let's start out with a box like this. That's the side of the, of the barn. How do I find the point up here, the pitch? Here's one way of doing it, the best way to do it. Cross through, come right up through the middle, and the the steepness of the peak is really arbitrary. Yes, you decide where you want that. So I'm going to put it right there. Now, perspective all depends uh, where you're standing, where your eye level is. But I'm going to put the eye level somewhere right in here. And so let's put the side of the barn on. So if this is my eye level, this is what I've established, I know the roof, the bottom of the building are all going to end up at one point on the eye level. So let's put another little side building on here. Again, the pitch of this is you know, it's totally up to you here. And so once I've got that kind of penciled in, I'm going to have that actually overlap a little bit. Now once I've established that, I think I'm going to put a hill in here, which will cover up part of the uh, barn like that. And I'm going to leave these lines in here just so you can get that to register how to do that. And I can put windows in, I can put a bunch of other things in there. But uh, that's the basic shape to get to the find the peak and knowing that this has to come back to your eye level no matter where you're standing. And the same with this side here. This will go to the right vanishing point. But because of the tip of this, this box that I put in, the right vanishing point is way out to the right, maybe four or five, six feet. The key is they both have to end up on the eye level. These are going here. There's the eye level. Come across. These also are going to have to meet on the eye level. Okay. So you can't have one higher or lower than the other. They have to meet where your eyes are, where your eyes are looking. It's also called the horizon line. Okay, I've thrown that in there. Let me just throw a little color on there just to bring it to life a little bit. I'm going to start out with uh, my mop brush. Some lemon yellow. I'm just going to throw in some lemon yellow in here. You can see how nice and juicy it is. A lot of water. There's plenty enough time for detail later on. Okay, so while that's soaking in, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put some clouds in it. So I'm going to take... Uh, I'm going to take some quinacridone violet and some ultramarine blue. Always have a test sheet between your palette and your painting. Mix your color, test it, that's what I want, then go to your painting. It's also important to have the water next to your palette too. You don't want to have your water on one side, your palette on another. Um, So that looks, that looks pretty good. I want that to soak in enough. I want the colors to, uh, the clouds I'm going to put in go soft, but I don't want them uh, to run too far. So let's just see what happens. I may have to change the slope of what I'm working on. And I'm working on a binder, a three ring binder. Uh, they make great tabletop easels and uh, pretty much everybody has one laying around the house somewhere. Aerial perspective, the clouds Generally, it will get narrower, smaller, and thinner as they go back in space. And I'm coming in there pretty, qu pretty quickly with those strokes. I'm 
If I put something in like that that's stronger than I want, I'll just wipe it right out of there. To take a little, a little water on a damp paper towel. If I can pull that back enough, it's not an issue. Plus, I can go back in there now. Everything's still wet, so I can go back in there with some yellow, throw some more yellow back in there. Okay, that's the basic idea for that. I'm going to dry that right now, and then we'll go on to the building real quick. All right, now I'm going to take some uh, Payne's Gray, touch of yellow ochre or raw sienna with it. Just get a nice color for the side of the barn. This uh, barn is kind of a typical barn where the pretty much the paint's gone. It's, uh, it's in the gray family here. Here I'm using about a number, let's see, this is the number... Number eight round brush. I'm going to lay that in pretty quickly, and I'm going to have the light coming coming from up here. This is where the sun's going to be coming from, this direction. So my shadows will be casting this way. This side of the building, I'll have that lighter than this side. So I'm going to put some uh, more ochre in here, warm it up a little bit. And then we'll go cooler on the left side here. And by having the light coming from here, I'll be able to put a strong cast shadow from this building here onto the main barn here. Now I could wait for this to dry and then put that dark area underneath the overhang here, but I'm going to put it in while it's wet here just for time's sake. Just a little bit down that side. Now here's a case if I wanted to put some texture in there, I could splatter it with clear water. I could uh, use salt, but I think I'm going to just stay just like it is right now. I can use a dry brush to put the texture of the barn wood on there. Again, I'm going to dry this and then uh, come back. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this, uh, looking at my reference that I'll show you at the end here, I'm going to put this in more of an ochre color yellow ochre. I'm going to have this be a stone, a stone wall right here. So I'll let that dry and then we'll have that strong cast shadow coming from over here. And you'll notice it's getting lighter here. So you got to remember that uh, watercolor dries lighter. So make sure you uh, beef up the colors enough. Okay, let's uh, let that soak in a little bit here, and then I'm going to take a brush, fan it out, just drag, drag some of that shadow area down into the barn here. And that's good enough. Again, it's back and forth with the dryer, so here we go. Okay, while I was away, uh, while this was still wet, I did splatter a little water in here. It gives me that nice texture. So I'm going to let that dry a little more, but while I'm doing that, I'll go to the other side of the barn here. This side of the barn is going to be in shade uh, because the light source, again, is coming from up here. So I'm going to cool this off temperature-wise. I'm going to get in there with some ultramarine blue. Come down here. A lot of times I might go darker back in the background, and so what I'll do is I'll take clear water and, and just kind of lighten this side of the barn on the left side. Okay, I'm going to throw a little warmth in here just for variety, especially back here. And then I'm going to hit it a little stronger again with the blues right in here. Right, This is the Biggest contrast is right here, right here, and also the shadow that I'm going to put in. So you really want to make sure that pops. So that's ultramarine blue. And while that's drying, that's dry now, so I can go to this side of the building. I'm going to go back to my grays. Um, you see, I, I 
I just kind of load the brush up and lay it on there. Look at it. If I don't like it, I can add more water. I can uh, adjust the color on it. Even though this side is going to be in shade, I'm going to lay a value in there. So I'm going to let that soak in a little bit and then I'll throw the dark shadow underneath the overhang. Okay, let's go to this side here. So that was actually my sky color that I put over the top of the yellow, the, the beige color of the barn. Now I'm going there with some ultramar ultramarine blue and just kind of darken that up a little bit. So, we have the light source again from up there. So, this is going to cast a shadow into here. So, I want that cool temperature. When I talk about temperature, I want it cool also. So, I'm going to take some more ultramarine blue. Just kind of drop that in there. I got an inch, half inch, quarter inch, an eighth of an inch. But these are great. Um, because you can put a window in one in one stroke or two strokes. And I should show a window in here too. So I'm going to go back to my uh, I'm going to go back to burnt umber with some of the blue in it. Just something that's a little darker than that side of the barn there. I'm just going to add some dry brush in there. It's a little too dark, I'll dilute it. So I've got to speed this up a little bit. We're running out of time here. I'm going to put a, uh, put a roof on here. I'm going to go with a, sort of a rusty red. I'm going to take some red, maybe some burnt sienna. I'll lay a roof in there real quick. And just to break it up so it's not that flat color, I'm going to just take some of my ultramarine blue, throw it in on that corner. But you can see it's the, how it's giving it form by having these strong shadows cast across here. If you need to turn your art, that's fine too. Do whatever is most comfortable here. I'm just throwing a couple indications of... Uh, where the, the wood ends on the building. Here I'm going to turn it this way. Maybe just put a few in. Maybe there's some that are separated more, more than others. You can see a little darker contrast here. Up the side of the building. Give it a little overhang. Put some lightning rods on there. Again, the lightning rods too, the top of the lightning rods. They're going to go right back to that left vanishing point. Everything on the left is going to the left vanishing point. Everything on the right is going to the right vanishing point. Now, I think that's pretty good. That's about all we've got time for. I'm going to show you the finished painting that I did this morning, and hopefully this will be real helpful. Thanks for watching.